forward to and come and enjoy the best on the big screen scene at this cinema. May we remind you that for the convenience of those patrons who prefer not to smoke, seating areas on the right-hand side of this auditorium have been designated as no smoking areas. Your cooperation is appreciated. Britain is stepping out into space. For 10 years, her scientists have listened enviously to the signals from Russian and American spacecraft. Signals that supply new knowledge for their own scientists, while the rest of the world has stayed firmly rooted to the ground. Britain's giant radio telescope at Jodrell Bank was completed just in time to hear the first ever satellite, Sputnik, launched by the Russians in October 1957. Now, Jodrell Bank can tune in to its own experiment as UK3 circles the Earth. UK3 is a name given to the first spacecraft built entirely in Britain. Its purpose is scientific inquiry into the forms of radiation which come from outer space. To collect these, the satellite is expensively covered in gold plate. This device is to sniff the ozone 300 miles up for the weathermen. It's one of five different experiments in the satellite from universities and government research stations and from Jodrell Bank. All the equipment depends on electricity generated from the sun's rays. Over the next year, the results of the experiments should be coming back to Earth by radio. Over three years of planning, designing, building and testing have gone into the production of UK-3. It's part of an Anglo-American program launched into orbit by an American rocket. But before being shipped across the Atlantic, the satellite had to prove under test that it would stand up to all the rigors of life in outer space. Wherever the satellite went, this caravan went with it. It was fully equipped to monitor the electronic performance of the satellite when under test. Apart from having to work in a complete vacuum, UK-3 will have to spend its life spinning like a top, its aerials swung out by centrifugal force. Although this is one of the easiest ways of keeping it stable, the satellite has to be delicately balanced right down to the last rivet. UK-3 went to the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough for any tests which its makers, the British Aircraft Corporation, could not do themselves. This test is to find out, among other things, just how strong is its magnetism, so that allowances can be made for it. Some tests, needing very expensive equipment, like this giant vacuum chamber, are to answer very simple questions. For example, in outer space, just how hot or cold will the satellite get? Remember that every two hours, it swings from blazing sunlight into icy cold shadow behind the Earth. And delicate instruments like tape recorders and transmitters will only work properly at room temperature. The engineers had to juggle their design to make sure that UK-3, spinning in outer space, would radiate and absorb just the right amount of heat. The giant vacuum chamber proved them right. The other satellite, ESRO-2, is made by Hawker Siddeley Dynamics, who won the contract in the teeth of European competition. Years of work could be wasted by the slightest speck of dust, so no chances are taken. The assembly area is even pressurized to keep dust out. This satellite uses French electronics and carries experiments from Holland, France and Britain. 
Like UK-3, it was destined to be launched by the same sort of American rocket. It's about the same weight, 180 pounds, and uses the sun's rays for electricity. In this case, the makers have been much more sparing with the gold plate, but the price is still more than a million pounds. It's the work and testing needed to achieve absolute reliability that costs the money. This is the nerve center. It issues 37 different commands, anything from spin a little faster please to measure these cosmic rays. But most experiments will be looking at the sun and especially at the sun spots. These will soon be at their 11 year peak and scientists are anxious to find out just what really happens. The French will measure the streams of charged particles and the Dutch, the X-rays, which these huge storms on the sun's surface pour out into space. One hundred and ten minutes of results are stored on a tape and they can be played back to Earth through the gold-plated radio transmitter in two minutes flat. Lamps to imitate sunlight test out the solar cells. There are 3,500 of them, each generating a tiny current when the sun shines on them. Carefully wired up, they provide the satellite with 50 watts, about the same power as the average light bulb. But a satellite's early life is a continuous journey from one test to another. Since launching it into orbit costs the best part of a million pounds, and there's no way of repairing it once it's up there, everything has to be exactly right. Since it'll spend its life spinning, it has to be balanced with correcting weights, just like a car wheel. But for a satellite, ordinary lead weights won't do. They have to be gold, or at least gold-plated. One of the problems is not to over-test. Too much testing can weaken the satellite so much that launching it is the last straw, and it breaks down on the very occasion it shouldn't. But after all the meticulous preparations, the satellite must pass a final test. Will it stand up to the rough ride it'll get when the rocket takes it up? By using a flashing light to view the structure, the vibrations appear to slow down. And in this way, the tester gets advance warning of trouble to come. This, in particular, is a test that shouldn't be overdone. And as a precaution, no fewer than eight copies of Ezro 2 were manufactured. The chosen satellite, now being put into its container for the journey to America, is ready for a year of useful life in outer space. At the end of that year, she'll be switched off to provide radio space for more spacecraft. Then, Ezro 2 will be just one more addition to the 2,000 odd pieces of hardware already gliding silently through space. Although Britain has been a late starter in the manufacture of satellites, the experience is valuable, and it's an industry with a big future, especially in communication satellites. There's a sting in the tail, though. The spectacular scale of the American space industry proves a big temptation to British engineers, a number of whom accompanied the satellites to the launching pad in California. When the satellites are launched into outer space, they don't come down. And joining the brain drain, engineers have been known to take off too.
look forward to and come and enjoy the best on the big screen scene at this cinema. You've never seen anything like it in your life. Enter the wonderful world of Dr. Doolittle. Filled with adventure, thrills, enchantment, romance, and music. You've never met anyone in your life like the incredible Dr. Doolittle, the man who talks to animals in their own language, as played by Rex Harrison. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. If people ask me, can you speak rhinoceros? I'd say, of course I Can't you? <laughs> You've never heard such magnificent music in your life. 14 great songs to enchant you, including After Today and I think I like you. And I think you like me too. Hugh Lofting's famed Dr. Doolittle stories fill the screen with fun and excitement you've never seen before. It's the once-in-a-lifetime entertainment. Rex Harrison talks about Dr. Doolittle. The first film in which a human being, myself, actually talks to animals. I think it'll be a film which all the family, including the animals, are going to want to see. Including you, Chi Chi, aren't you? Chi Chi? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Nothing is real. The Beatles. Yellow Submarine. Photography, landscapes painted with beetle sounds. Picture yourself in a boat on a river with tangerine trees and marmalade skies. We all live in a yellow submarine. The yellow, yellow submarine. submarine. Yellow submarine. We the forces of good, the beetles. The boob. I must complete my bust. Two novels, finish my blueprints, begin my begee. Hey, Jerry, me, must you always talk in rhyme? <laughs> if I spoke prose, you'd all find out. I don't know what I talk about. He's a real nowhere man sitting in his nowhere land. The forces of evil. Robin, the butterfly stomper. Snapping turtle turk. The Apple Bonkers. The Terrible Flying Glove. The Arch Villain. The Blue Meanie. You could pass for the originals. We are the originals. We're Sergeant Pepper's lovely hearts club We hope you will enjoy the show.
look at John, will you? What's the matter, John, love? Blue meanies? New and blue meanies have been sighted within the vicinity of this theatre. Oh, there's only one way to go out. How's that? Singing! One, two, three, four! <laughs> Now, this isn't going to hurt. And so, a great hospital swings into action. Darling, are you all right? It's doctors, nurses and orderlies working calmly. <laughs> Coolly and efficiently to relieve the suffering of others. Oh! What a carry on! As that well known prescription for laughter, the Carry On team present a bed panorama of hospital life. Carry On Doctor. I'm easy in a hurry. Peter Rogers and Gerald Thomas invite you to take the cure for all depression in this hilarious hospital. Smile, please. Smile? What with? Frankie Howard. Oh. Come now, Mr. Bigger. We don't want to lie in our nice, comfortable bed with our nasty old pants on, do we now? Madam, what you do in your bed is your own affair. Sidney James. my watch. You must have taken it off. No, no, I distinctly remember having it on when I started to sew that hello. Oh no, it was an alarm too. Kenneth Williams, the hospital's prize surgeon. Is this your first? First? First what? Baby. Huh? Charles Hawtrey is having a baby? Jim Dale, the handsome, hopeless hospital Romeo. <laughs> oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Ah! oh, what a lovely looking pair. Mm -hmm. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Barbara Windsor. Oh! Patty Jakes, and a more matronly matron you couldn't wish to meet, Joan Sims. Mr. Bigger's very fond of fresh flowers, especially chrysanthemums. He is never without a pot by his bed. Bernard Breslau. What's your trouble? Oh, I had my appendix out. Appendix? All about your leg? Oh, no. That happened when I fell off the operating table. Anita Harris. Morning, Mr. Ooh. Ooh. Peter Butterworth. Full details of programs at this cinema can be found in the Evening Mail. Your guide to our programs. A fine carpet makes all the difference, makes yours a home to be proud of. Every home is a castle with rugs or carpets from our wide range of colours, styles, sizes. Carpets are our business. Beauty needs time. Relax and be pampered and let us give you the professional touch.
Zimmer. Da ist zu geräumig, weil der Motor quer sitzt. Und die Traktion der Lantera. Das ist eine Suspension hydraulik. Our Morris 1300. Naturally, the center of attraction. simple Kodak camera becomes a color camera with the new Kodak color film. Color. The magic, fantastic world of color. 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 Coda color captures them all. Use Coda color in bright sunshine, hand it to your dealer, and back come prints in full color. Kodak camera from 24 and 5 pins upwards will take color snaps in Kodak color. Your Kodak dealer will give you these leaflets, telling you about the complete range of Kodak cameras and the new Kodak color film. Yes, it's Kodak for color. A sovereign. It's more than 50 years since sovereigns were last issued. Now, there's a new sovereign in circulation by Benson and Hedges. Today's sovereign smokes cool. Today's sovereign has real gift value. Today's sovereign is three and six for 20. Today's sovereign is for you. Sovereign from Benson and Hedges. Three and six for 20 with gifts. Delicious. Walls piping hot dogs. On sale now and when you leave the theater. Kiora! On sale now! When Master Maze meets Blondist, Butterkist, on sale now. Oh, I do fancy a Wall's ice cream. Don't you? Ice cream, like you get in the cinemas. Dark places, with moving pictures on the wall. And a lady with a tray of Wall's ice cream. No, uh, no, 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 uh, a tray. Ice cream, like a chocolate nut cup. Cool, creamy stuff with nuts. Crunchy, orange and pineapple split. All orangey with cool pineapple stuff in the middle. You lick it or bite it. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, well, don't scream, you eat it! Oh, turn it up. Wall's ice cream. Indescribable. We stop at nothing to get our nuts to you fresh. <laughs> fresh from the jungle. Danger? We shrug it off. Obstacles? We take them in our stride. And when we can't go by Shank's pony, we go by something bigger. All this in our special packaging, in the name of freshness. That's why, pack after pack, Golden Wonder Peanuts aren't just fresh, but jungle fresh. Buy some now, but don't feed the animals. on a day of confusion, disorder, and defeat. In one brilliant moment of madness, the 600 officers and men of the British Light Cavalry faced the entire Russian army. This was the age of pageantry and splendor, when soldiers dreamt of glory and war was a glamorous game. It was a time of arrogance and power, of regiments resplendent on parade, and the richest and proudest of them all was the symbol of the British Empire, the heroic Light Brigade. Through the gates and over the walls of Sebastopol. Will you join me? We'd not get up the slopes, Russell. I would. He would. <laughs> but he would be alone. Yes, alone. Death loves a crowd. Watch how death will pick out the crowds. The very, very rich, the ruling class, and the poor. The righteous who opposed the war, and the zealous who demanded it. Trevor Howard as Lord Cardigan, John Gielgud as Lord Raglan, Jill Bennett as Mrs. Jubilee, Harry Andrews as Lord Lucas. Vanessa Redgrave as Clarissa, and David Hemmings as Captain Nolan. The men who came to fight and die, and those who came to watch. On a day of confusion, disorder, and defeat. In one brilliant moment of madness, the 600 officers and men of the British Light Cavalry charged the entire Russian army. heroic moment, the charge of the Light Brigade. 